always be silenced. Today we gather to celebrate the 26th Sunday in Ordinary Time. I am Dan Nolan. Our second lecture is Savannah Furman. Our leader of song is Deborah Eater. And our organist is Hank Wajda. Monsignor Michael McCormack is our principal celebrant. We will be having the Blessing of Animals on Saturday morning, October 5th at 11 a.m. in front of the church. Our Faith Enrichment Series will begin in October. For those who attended last year, this is a new series. The series consists of four sessions, with two sessions being held in October and two sessions in February. Parishioners have the option of choosing the Wednesday evening sessions, the Saturday morning sessions, or the Sunday evening sessions. All are welcome, indeed strongly encouraged, to participate. Please register for the four session series through our website, Facebook page, or by calling the rectory. Thank you. In support of the Legacy of Life Foundation and their pro-life activities, our parish community will once again be participating in the Baby Bottle Initiative. Baby bottles will be available outside the doors of church next weekend. Parishioners are asked to fill a bottle with money or a check and return the baby bottles by the last weekend of October. Please see the insert in today's parish bulletin. Thank you for your continuing support of our pro-life efforts here at St. Francis Cabrini. This week's Pot of Gold Jackpot Prize is $40,000. Tickets are available in the vestibule of the church and at the rectory. Now as we prepare for Mass, the prayer for priestly vocations can be found on the inside cover of the Blue Prayer Book. Please stand and let us pray. Father, in your plan for salvation, you provide shepherds for your people. Fill your church with the spirit of courage and love. Raise up worthy ministers for your altars and ardent but gentle servants of the gospel. Bless our archdiocese with numerous vocations to the sacred priesthood. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever, amen. Our entrance hymn is 207, Holy, 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 207. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Special welcome to those who are joining us from their home. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, who manifest your almighty power above all by pardoning and showing mercy, bestow, we pray, your grace abundantly upon us and may those hastening to attain your promises heirs to the treasures of heaven. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. This time we'll have the children's liturgy of the word by children in kindergarten, first, second, and third grades. To please come up. And here we thought we only had one or two. This is wonderful. 
My dear children, you will now go to hear God's word to reflect on the wonderful things God has done for us. We will await your return so together we can celebrate the Eucharist. Go now and listen to God's word to you. reading from the book of Numbers. The Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to Moses. Taking some of the spirit that was on Moses, the Lord bestowed it on the 70 elders. And as the spirit came to rest on them, they prophesied. Now two men, one named Eldad and the other Medad, were not in the gathering but had been left in the camp. They too had been on the list but had not gone out to the tent. Yet the Spirit came to rest on them also, and they prophesied in the camp. So when a young man quickly told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp, Joshua, son of Nun, who from his youth had been Moses' aide, said, Moses, my Lord, stop them. But Moses answered him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the people of the Lord were prophets? Would that the Lord might bestow his spirit on them all. The word of the Lord.
did not rule over me, then shall I be blameless and innocent of serious sin. A reading from the letter of St. James. Come now, you rich, weep and wail over your impending miseries. Your wealth has rotted away, your clothes have become moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and that corrosion will be a testimony against you. It will devour your flesh like a fire. You have stored up treasure for the last days. Behold, the wages you withheld from the workers who harvested your fields are crying aloud and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and pleasure. You have fattened your hearts for the day of slaughter. You have condemned. You have murdered the righteous one. He offers you no resistance. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. At that time, John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to vent him because he does not follow us. Jesus replied, do not prevent him. There is no one who performs a mighty deed in my name who can at the same time speak ill of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. Anyone who gives you a cup of water to drink because you belong to Christ Amen, I say to you, will surely not lose his reward. Whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a great millstone were put around his neck and he were thrown into the sea. 
If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life maimed than with two hands to go into Gehenna, into the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter into life crippled than with two feet to be thrown into Gehenna. And if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Better for you to enter into the kingdom of God with one eye than with two eyes to be thrown into Gehenna where the worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. The Gospel of the Lord. From time to time we hear the following words or words similar to them. I don't like them. I don't trust them. They are different from us. They have a different religion. They're a different race, different color, different culture. Sometimes we hear people say these things. Other times, we say them. And sometimes when those words are taken to an extreme, it can lead to violence, and innocent people can be hurt. We wonder why it is that when we meet someone or hear of a group, that for some reason we immediately think negative thoughts we begin to emphasize in a negative way the differences. It's all because of our wounded human nature flowing from original sin. There's a proclivity toward the negative. Instead of seeing someone and thinking positive things, looking for the similarities between ourselves and them, rejoicing in their difference. Because what matter is it that someone is of a different color, a different culture, different from us? We're all sons and daughters of the same father, which makes us brothers and sisters with everyone. Sometimes most of us, if not all of us, are guilty of this. And we're not alone. Even the apostles were guilty of it. We just heard it in today's gospel, the beginning of the gospel. Here were men who were being formed by Jesus himself and commissioned to go forth to proclaim the good news to everyone. No exceptions. And yet, they were guilty of a us-them mentality. And notice this. We're listening to the Gospel of Mark. This is the only time that the Apostle John is speaking. Usually it is St. Peter who's the impulsive one, no filter, speaks whatever's on his mind, usually gets himself in trouble, has to be reprimanded by Jesus. But here is John, the beloved disciple. Teacher, we saw someone driving out demons in your name, and we tried to prevent him because he does not follow us. And the Lord's immediate response, do not prevent him. 
In time, the apostles would come to know, not to prevent, but rather to include. And so it gives us an opportunity, especially since it is John, the beloved apostle, of all people, there he is, gives us an opportunity to think about ourselves, not someone else. And are we guilty? And so as I was personally reflecting on this, came to realize that over the years, many years, not with groups of people, but with individuals from time to time, I tended to zero in on the negative of that person. Personality trait, something different from myself. And I would always come away thinking you would think that they would do this in this particular way. And they didn't do it that way. They did it differently. And I would find fault with that. Praise and thank God I have people around me, usually staff, family, good friends, who took it upon themselves to say to me, do you know you're doing this? Do you realize the judgments you're making? I praise and thank God that they had the courage and the love to tell me so. Because it made me more aware of what I was doing. Impossible to change someone's personality just so that I would be pleased. Doesn't work that way. And so that's one of my faults, still struggling with it at times, but always mindful of what it should be. To include people, find the best in them, affirm their goodness, appreciate the differences, and not try to change them. And so as we continue in our liturgy, and maybe all of us, again myself included, because there's probably other things that I'm blinded to, just to make sure that we are doing what the Lord wants, including everyone, even those with differences than ourselves. As someone said, too often we draw a circle, and we include all those that we want in that circle, God would have us draw a much larger circle and include everyone. Everyone. Let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, 
and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. My brothers and sisters, gathered as a family, united in faith, let us bring our needs and our prayers before our loving and merciful God. For the Pope and all who shepherd the church in Christ's name, may the Lord bestow his spirit on them ever more fully. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For leaders in government, may the Lord strengthen them in integrity and courage as they work towards peace in the Middle East, Ukraine, and Africa. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all victims of natural disasters, as we especially pray for all those suffering through the effects of Hurricane Helene, that they do not lose hope and that they receive all the assistance they need at this time. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For each of us gathered here, may the Eucharistic banquet nourish our souls with the love of God. May our understanding of that love be more deeply rooted through participation in our upcoming Faith Enrichment Series on the Eucharist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For emergency responders and military personnel, that God will protect them and their families from harm, renew their strength and energy, and help them be instruments of healing and compassion. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our veterans, that the Lord's presence uphold and strengthen them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For healing and restoration to all those suffering illness and disease, that God grant them strength and courage in their suffering. We especially pray for all those names who are written in the White Intercessory Book, and also Marie Chiella, Edward Duco, Ann Gallagher, Patricia Gould, Mark Gravante, Mary Ann Kucharski, Annette Minicozzi, Kathleen Morn, Sharon Page, Diana Skyak, Baby Grayson Whitaker, and Kelly Wilson Malia. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died in faith, may Jesus, the Lamb of God, welcome then, them into the eternal kingdom, as we especially remember Ronald Albanowski, Joseph Emmanuel, Richard Lanza, and Donald Merrick. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of abundance, you provide for our every need. Listen to the prayers which we offer this day through Christ our Lord, amen. is 395, The Servant Song, 395.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O merciful God, that this our offering may find acceptance with you and that through it the wellspring of all blessing may be laid open before us. Through Christ our Lord, amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, his death we celebrate in love, his resurrection we confess with living faith. His coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, the supper was ended. He took the chalice 
and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Francis Cabrini, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you in your compassion. O oh, merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you that they're passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
It's the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. We invite those who are participating with us from their home and therefore not able to physically receive Holy Communion to please join in praying the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Our communion hymn is 659, Remember Your Love, 659.
Remember your love, 659. Let us pray. May this heavenly mystery, O Lord, restore us in mind and body, that we may be co-heirs in glory with Christ, to whose sufferings we are united whenever we proclaim his death, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. I invite Karen David to please come up. Good morning, everyone. 
I'm Karen David, and my husband Bob and I have been parishioners here for the past 36 years. And for the past 17 years, I've had the privilege of being the parish business manager here at St. Francis. My responsibilities as parish business manager include the parish finances, maintenance and upkeep of the parish campus and the, all the facilities on the campus. But my most important responsibility here is to be a good steward of the funds provided to us by you, our parishioners. And that's a responsibility I take very seriously. I appreciate this opportunity to personally thank all of you for your generosity and support of the parish. Like many of you on a personal level, I do a lot of price shopping to make sure I'm getting the best prices for goods and services. And as business manager, I manage our parish finances with the same diligence because prices today are escalating faster than you and I can keep up with. Over time, the amount needed to bridge the gap between the income from Sunday collections and our expenses has been growing, especially with the stubborn high rate of inflation. This is the problem we face now, and it's the main reason for conducting an increased offertory appeal at this time. So I hope those of you who are able to do so will prayerfully consider the request to increase your contributions. As Monsignor mentioned last weekend, he gives his contributions through electronic giving. And many people have asked me about that option, so I thought I'd tell you a little about it. The reason we encourage electronic giving is it gives us consistency in the contributions we receive. And consistency, as you know, is important when managing income and expenses. Electronic giving is convenient because once you set up the giving amount and frequency of your choice, you never have to be concerned with it again. There's no need to catch up when you're out of town or on vacation or scramble to find the checkbook on the way to Mass or worry about whether or not you have cash to put in the envelope. Our parish provides three different options for electronic giving, and you decide which one is best for you. All three options are easy to set up, and all three options are safe and secure. The first option is online bank threat pay through your own financial institution. Most banks provide a free and convenient bill paying service for its customers where you can pay your car insurance, your credit card, your doctor bill, anything you would normally write a check for. The good thing about online bill pay is instead of you physically writing the check, putting it in an envelope, putting a stamp on it, bringing it to the post office, you don't have to do any of that. The bank will write the check for you and the bank will mail the check for you. It's a free service and you don't even have to pay for the postage. To use online bill pay for your parish contributions, you simply add the parish as a payee. You decide how much and how often, and the bank will automatically send the parish a check on a weekly or a monthly basis. Set it up once, and you don't have to write a check again. And the best part about online bill pay is that it's free to you, and there are no fees charged to the parish. The next two options utilize a familiar application called Parish Giving. Through Parish Giving, you can authorize an electronic fund transfer between your bank and the parish bank account. You simply sign up with Parish Giving, provide them with your bank account information, and schedule a recurring transfer on a weekly or monthly basis. Parish Giving also provides the option to use a credit card rather than a bank account. Now, some people like this because credit card companies give you points or cash back every time you use your card. The same is with a bank transfer. You sign up with Parish Giving, give them your credit card information, and Parish Giving will regularly initiate a credit card payment for your donation at the frequency and amount that you choose. Parish giving services are also free to our parishioners, but they do charge fees to the parish. So all of these options are safe and secure, and they all provide access to your account so you can keep track of your contributions. You decide how much, how often, and when your contribution is provided, 
and you only need to set it up once. So if anyone has questions about any of these electronic giving options or would like some assistance in setting up an account, please give me a call at the rectory. I've had many parishioners come in and sit down at my desk and we set up the account together. So I'm happy to help in any way I can. Once again, I'd like to thank you sincerely for your financial support of the parish. May the Lord continue to bless you and your families and our parish community. Thank you. Karen, thank you very much. This is the fourth time that Karen has delivered this presentation to our parishioners starting last night at the 5.30, 7, 9, and now the 11 o'clock mass. As I said last week, it's never easy to talk about money in church, especially when an appeal is being made. But I'm very grateful to Karen because she really captured the essence of electronic giving. As she said, it's very easy to do and uh, you're welcome to come to the rectory and sit uh, with Karen and she could lead you through everything. Um, everything that was shared today uh, is also in the parish bulletin under the pastoral column. And so we invite you to read that as well. But it's a wonderful way of providing consistency with regard to the income uh, flowing into the church so that we can meet our bills. So Karen, again, I thank you very, very much. Now she's gonna be upset when I mention this, but. I don't usually get the opportunity with Karen sitting right there, but I know that many, many people in our parish and people who come to visit our parish community are really uh, thrilled to see all the improvements that have been made over the last couple of years. And we had a committee that worked on that and had a lot of uh, professional help, uh, but the one who had the vision and followed through to do everything is Karen David. So. Uh, be aware that when you see the beautiful uh, improvements made that uh, our business manager, parishioner, uh, Karen David, was the one that was the driving force for all that. So again, I'm killing her here right now, but I, I have to say it. And of course, behind every good woman is a good man. <laughs> And that's Bob David, our husband, sitting over here. So, Bob, we thank you, too. Please stand. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our recessional hymn is 388, God Has Chosen Me. Three, eight, eight.